Martin St. Louis, you all know him as the head coach of the Montreal Canadiens, but did you know he also used to play in the NHL? That, that's a joke. That's a, please don't take it. It's a joke. Martin St. Louis is a cautionary tale for many NHL teams, not because he was picked too high in the draft, because he wasn't picked at all! Listed at 5'8", 176 pounds on HockeyDB, so I can only imagine what he was listed at in his draft year, Martin St. Louis would go on to become one of the greatest undrafted players of all time, certainly one of the greatest undrafted right wingers of all time. And out of all the teams that didn't draft Martin St. Louis, the Calgary Flames did the worst because they actually signed the guy, had him for parts of two seasons, let him go anyway to join the Tampa Bay Lightning, a team that he would have his jersey raised to the rafters with, and more importantly for the context of the Calgary Flames, uh, he would beat the Flames in the 2004 Stanley Cup Final. Ouch. But even though Martin St. Louis will forever be a Stanley Cup champion with the Tampa Bay Lightning, and even though he has his jersey raised to the rafters, it wasn't always the greatest relationship there. A relationship that soured. Drama that would lead to a high profile deal for both teams involved, and a trade tree that is still going on both sides of the trade tree today. Let's revisit the time the Tampa Bay Lightning traded Martin St. Louis to the New York Rangers. This is the Martin St. Louis trade tree. So I gave you some of the long history with Martin St. Louis, him going undrafted the beginning of his career, winning a Stanley Cup with Tampa in 2004. Those things are kinda far gone from what we're talking about today. We need to go about a decade into the future. Let's go all the way back to 2013. Now, if 2013 doesn't sound very long ago to you, think again. Steve Eisenman, now the GM of the Detroit Red Wings, was the GM of the Tampa Bay Lightning, a team that would go on to be pretty good. But in 2013, they weren't very good. They had parts, they had, they had parts for sure. They had uh, Victor Hedman on the back end, he was drafted in 2009. Uh, Steven Stamkos up front, uh, he was drafted in 2008. The Tampa Bay Lightning are a great example that success isn't linear. The first three years of the Stamkos era in Tampa were missed the playoffs, missed the playoffs, missed the playoffs, followed by an 18 game run all the way to game seven of the Eastern Conference Final in 2011 where the Lightning would fall to the Boston Bruins. Steven Stamkos famously taking a slap shot right to the nose in that one. But Martin St. Louis, then an older member of that team in his mid thirties was a fantastic part of that young and blossoming team. 10 goals, 10 assists for 20 points in 18 Stanley Cup playoff games. What's it gonna be next year? Surely the Tampa Bay Lightning are, are in the Stanley Cup conversation. Nope, they missed the playoffs. In 2012, in 2013, and 2014, and two of those years are important to this story. The 2013 lockout shortened NHL season was a big one for Tampa. Uh, they, they didn't do very well, but two players did. A much younger Steven Stamkos had 29 goals in 48 games, and if you're wondering how good that actually is, it's a 49.5 goal pace in an 82 game season. Let's let's round that up to 50. So he's scoring at a 50 goal pace in a lockout shortened season on a team that's not very good. Who was setting him up? That would be Martin St. Louis with 60 points in 48 games, which would make him the league's leading scorer. He won the Art Ross trophy. He won the scoring race. 43 of those 60 points were assists. And if you're like, oh, that St. Louis only had 17 goals, that's not very high. Well, the next closest guy on his team had 11. St. Louis had 60 points that season, Stamkos had 57, the next closest guy on the team was Teddy Purcell with 36. They were a formidable two-man wrecking crew, but there wasn't a ton on that Tampa team beyond them. But one thing there was to look forward to, the next season, 2014, the Sochi Winter Olympics, which to this day is the last Olympics that NHL players were allowed to play in. But surely the dynamic duo of Martin St. Louis and Steven Stamkos would be on Team Canada, would they not? E. Steven Stamkos, who was left off the 2010 roster despite having an amazing season, it's okay, it ended up working out all right for Canada, was going to be on Team Canada. He was, definitely. During a regular season game, he charges the net, smashes into the goal post, breaks his leg. For a brief time, it looks like he might be healthy enough for the Olympics, but it didn't work out. Martin St. Louis, on the other hand, he just won the scoring race. He's a lock to make the team, surely. Oh, 
and the GM of Team Canada, Steve Eiserman, the GM of his NHL team. There's no way he gets left off that team, except he did. Now, injuries always happen, and they happened for Team Canada, which freed up a spot for Martin St. Louis at the Olympics, but being left off the initial roster made him rather cross indeed. And worth mentioning, personal stuff aside, he was getting up there in age and the Lightning weren't very good. They were on the verge of missing the playoffs yet again. So a blockbuster trade follows. The trade was as follows. The New York Rangers acquire Martin St. Louis and a second round pick in 2015. Tampa acquires, oh my goodness, so much. Rangers captain Ryan Callahan and his enormous cap hit, a first round pick in 2014, a first round pick in 2015, and a seventh round pick in 2015. I love that stuff. All right, I'll give you our captain and two firsts. No, I, I just can't do it. What if I throw in a seventh round pick next year? You son of a gun, you got a deal. That did it, that's what did it. You know what, you can keep those two firsts. I want the seventh. What followed was an emotional roller coaster to say the least. St. Louis got to play 19 games with the New York Rangers before the Rangers entered that year's 2014 Stanley Cup playoffs. And he had one goal and seven assists for eight points in 19 games, which is fine. It's fine. It's not what you expect out of the guy who just won the scoring race last year. And it's definitely not what you expect out of a guy who you traded your captain in two first for and a seventh and a seventh, sorry, next year's seventh. But, and I often say this in videos, especially for trades that happen right before the trade deadline, you don't get a player at the trade deadline, especially a player of Martin St. Louis caliber, for their regular season production. Heck, you might even be resting the guy. Figure out the chemistry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just rest up for the playoffs. You get him for what he can do in the playoffs. Well, in those playoffs, Martin St. Louis delivered against all odds. You may know the story, after all, it wasn't that long ago, but just in case you need a reminder, Martin St. Louis' mother passed away unexpectedly during the Rangers series against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Nobody in their right mind would blame him if he didn't play another game in those playoffs. But famously, St. Louis rejoined his teammates and in a playoff game, game six against the New York Rangers, on Mother's Day, he did this. Stepan gave the pass to the side, all the way back in front, the shot block, rebound, score! Rangers get the first goal, and I believe it's gonna be Marty San Louis. Wouldn't that be something on Mother's Day in New York? Marty, you have come through big time. Chills every single time chills. On top of everything St. Louis was dealing with personally, let's not forget that part of the reason this trade happened was a bit of something to prove for a guy who's already won the Stanley Cup, for a guy who's already won the scoring race. You were wrong to leave me off that team. Even if I ended up making it, you were wrong to leave me off that team. And sure enough, St. Louis had 15 points en route to 25 Stanley Cup playoff games and a berth in the Stanley Cup Final for the Rangers in 2014. Unfortunately for St. Louis and the Rangers, they would end up falling to the LA Kings, winning their second cup in three seasons, but they came very, very close. And amazingly, next year, and I promise this will all tie in, the Rangers with St. Louis make it all the way back to the Eastern Conference Final. 19 games played in those playoffs for St. Louis again. St. Louis had a long career, man, a really long career, like a decade and a half at least, and he won the Stanley Cup with Tampa. So you would think he played far and away more playoff games with Tampa than the Rangers, right? Well, he did play more, but 107 Stanley Cup playoff games played for Martin St. Louis. 44 of them were for the New York Rangers in a two season span. He was fantastic for that team. But in that second playoff run in 2015, who do the Rangers run into in the Eastern Conference Finals? Tampa. And you know who won? Tampa, with Ryan Callahan as part of the team. That is a tough one. Now, would St. Louis get to end his career by hoisting the Stanley Cup above his head? No, but at the end of the day, he's still an Art Ross winner, a gold medalist at the end of the day, still, and a Stanley Cup champion. And despite all that, still the most famous picture of him is probably that one that's just of his legs in the gym. Short, perhaps by NHL standards, but he is a short king, truly the god of quad. Now the New York Rangers 
would be the last team that St. Louis would play for in the NHL. So his part of the trade tree is done. And don't worry, we'll get to the New York Rangers side of the trade tree, but first, that second round pick in 2015 that the Rangers got was a busy B indeed. You might notice written under that 2015 second round pick, it says, Oliver Shillington. Well, you might have noticed that Oliver Shillington is not a member of the New York Rangers and never was. You might also notice that it says he was traded to the Arizona Coyotes. He was never an Arizona Coyote either. This trade bounced around. In, in fact, it bounced right out of this trade tree because it was part of a much larger package as the Rangers tried to win the 2015 Stanley Cup. The deal was as follows. The second round pick that the Rangers got from Tampa packaged along with young players Anthony Duclair and John Moore in a 2016 first round pick. In exchange, the Rangers receive Keith Yandel way back in his Ironman streak at the time, Chris Summers, and a fourth round pick in 2016. We'll get to the Tampa side of this trade tree in just a sec, but you'll, you'll see. We still have some unattended business in New York. So Keith Yandel, Chris Summers, and a fourth round pick in 2016. Let's take care of the easiest branch of this trade tree first. Chris Summers, he played six games, wasn't traded, that's it. The fourth round pick I wanna save, so let's look at Keith Yandel. This trade happened March 1st, 2015, en route to the Rangers, trying to win the 2015 Stanley Cup, and they got really close until they ran into Tampa, like I mentioned. And even though they lost to Tampa, I gotta say, this is some tidy work from the Rangers. Because yes, Duclair and Moore, those two young players and a first round pick, they were probably more important to this trade than the 2015 second rounder. But despite that, the Rangers acquired Martin St. Louis to take a run at the 2014 and the 2015 Stanley Cup. They got another asset along with Martin St. Louis and they traded that asset, they flipped it, they never used it, they flipped that asset to go for the 2015 Stanley Cup for Keith Yandel, who's the principal part of that deal. St. Louis and Yandel got to play together. I just wanted to highlight that, that's tidy work. Yeah, they lost to Tampa, but it's tidy work. If they lost to anybody else, it'd be less embarrassing, but it's, it's tidy. In 103 games over two seasons with the New York Rangers, Yandel had seven goals and 51 assists. He was a really good offensive defenseman for a time for 58 points. He also had 24 Stanley Cup playoff games played in which he had three goals and nine assists for 12 points. It's a half a point a game defenseman in the playoffs. It's pretty good. They try to win, they don't win. The sun sets on Yandel's time in New York, then he's traded and it's not from very much. He's traded to the Florida Panthers for a sixth round pick in 2016 and a fourth round pick in 2017. The sixth round pick is such a bummer because the Rangers keep this pick and they use this pick and they draft a guy named Tyler Wall. And before you ask, yes, he's a goalie in the AHL, in the ECHL. And I'm so sad. I want a goalie named Wall in the NHL. Think of how well that jersey would sell. The memes, won't someone think of the memes? The Leafs have a goalie in their system named Joseph Wall, but it's W-O-L-L -L and it's not the same. Ah, ah, ah. Oh well, that branch of the trade tree ends. It's upsetting, right? It's, uh. The fourth round pick that the Rangers got for Keith Yandel was flipped. This was for a fourth round pick in 2017. So obviously the Rangers moving down in the 2017 draft and a sixth round pick in 2017. The New York Rangers love trading for a fourth and a sixth in the same deal. The fourth round pick in 2017 was used to select a defenseman named Brandon Crawley. He pinged around the AHL. That part of the trade tree is done. The sixth round pick the Rangers got from the Panthers, they used. They drafted a forward named Morgan Barron, who's six foot four, 220 pounds. Oh my goodness. But he only played 18 games over two seasons for the New York Rangers, but then, he was dealt in a trade that helped them compete in the Stanley Cup playoffs just this past season. Because Barron was part of a huge deal along with a first round pick, a second round pick, and a fifth round pick and sent to the Winnipeg Jets for Andrew Kopp 
and a sixth round pick in 2023. I know! So the sixth round pick in 2023, obviously we can't talk about because it's in the future, but it's nice that it's guaranteed this trade tree continues, at least on this end. You'll see why it continues on the Tampa end soon. If you're watching this in the future, I'd love to know what that 2023 pick turns into. Does the trade tree continue? Is this gonna be more work in the future? But enough about that. Even though he didn't stick around with the Rangers after the playoffs were done, he signed as a free agent in Detroit this offseason. Holy cow, was Andrew Kopp a magical member of the New York Rangers. Eight goals, 10 assists for 18 points in the Rangers' remaining 16 games that Kopp was able to play in before the playoffs. But even though he was kind of banged up, six goals, eight assists for 14 points in 20 Stanley Cup playoff games for the New York Rangers. Before, in the Stanley Cup final, they fell to, ironically, Tampa again! The circle of life, Lion King, very popular film. But isn't that amazing though, that a little piece, just a little piece of the Martin St. Louis trade from 2014 helped the Rangers get to the 2022 Eastern Conference Final just to lose to Tampa again. It's, it's, hockey is so weird. I want to end this half of the trade tree on another thing that happened just this past season because Andrew Kopp was a Ranger this past season. But we got to go back. Do, 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 do. Can you, can you put in a boop, 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 boop? Yeah, just like that. If we go boop, 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 back up to that three-part deal with the Florida Panthers for Keith Yandel, there was a fourth round pick in 2016. That pick was used to select a player named Tarmo Runinen, who played four games for the New York Rangers and then was traded. Traded all the way to the Carolina Hurricanes, divisional rival even, for a forward named Maxim Latunov, 26-year-old AHL forward. It's, eh. Ah, I wish it was more exciting. But that is it for the New York Rangers half of the Martin St. Louis trade tree so far. Let's have a gander at Tampa. So once again, remember, Tampa got Ryan Callahan, who was then the New York Rangers captain, a first round pick in 2014, a first round pick in 2015, and don't forget, very important, a seventh round pick in 2015. I keep teasing that seventh rounder like it's something. It's not. Here, here, I'll just get it out of the way. That seventh round pick was flipped in exchange for a player named Daniel Walcott. He's currently a 28 year old defender. He played one game for the Rangers in 2020, 2021, where he fought Kevin Connaughton. So if he never plays an NHL game ever again, he'll, he has a fight on the card. When Ryan Callahan was traded to the Tampa Bay Lightning, he was coming to the end of a contract that paid him 4.275 million per season. That contract was fine. The contract that did not age well at all is the one Eisenman gave him after that. Six years, 5.8 million per, no move clause for all six years, modified no trade for the last two, Bless cap friendly. I don't know what I would do without you. And while we're at it, NHL trade tracker, hockey reference and hockey DB. But it should be said, there was a while, Eisenman looked kind of smart because in Callahan's first full season with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Remember, that's 2014-15 season. He had 24 goals, 30 assists for 54 points in 77 games. And the thing about Ryan Callahan is the points were kind of nice, but he also hit everything that moved. He added two goals and six assists for eight points in 25 playoff games that playoff, which doesn't sound like very much, but remember the Lightning beat the Rangers that year in 2015, so Eiserman was looking pretty smart. But after that 54 point season with the Lightning, Callahan's highest point total for the rest of his career, which would come the following season, was 28. After that 28 point season, Callahan's game totals were 18, 67, and 52. Hard, hard miles. Ryan Callahan did not play hockey the easy way. So Callahan, whose last game in the NHL was in the 18-19 season, was traded. The deal was Ryan Callahan and a 2020 fifth round pick to the Florida Panthers for goaltender Mike Condon and a fourth round pick in 2020. This one's actually pretty easy. Mike Condon never played a game for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And the 2020 fourth round pick was used on a player named Nick Capone. He's a six foot two winger from the University of Connecticut and that's where he is right now. So that part of the trade tree may continue, but for now it's done. Then there's the two firsts. Tampa got three picks in exchange from Martin St. Louis. They got a first in 2014, a first in 2015, and a seventh in 2015. They used none of them. Tampa traded their 2014 first rounder, 28th overall that year, 
for a second rounder in 2014 and another second rounder in 2014. Ah, okay, so so this is the sort of thing you, you don't want to do with Tampa because they're a really smart team who drafts really well and they do really well. It's a popular thing in the analytics community. If, if you have a late first rounder, just trade down, get two seconds or something like that because the quality of draft pick between like pick 28 and 48 isn't very big, 28 and 58 even. And if your scouts know what they're doing and you can trust that Tampa's do, Oh, this trade is gonna be a fleecing. Oh, it's super not. Because with those two picks, Tampa selected a player named Dominic Massin and another player named Jonathan McLeod. Massin is currently a 26 year old defenseman playing in Finland. And Jonathan McLeod's last game was in the ECHL in 2018 19. Now, what if Tampa had simply selected the next player selected in the draft after each of those guys? Because the player selected after Massin was Thatcher Demko. Yeah. And the player selected after McLeod was Christian Dvorak, who, ironically, Martin St. Louis is currently coaching. Once again, Circle of Life, Lion King, it's a very good film. And that's, uh, that's it for that branch of that trade tree. Not great, Bob. So, all right, all right, all right, okay, okay. Tampa has one more first rounder, one. How do they do? Oh, wait a sec, they didn't even use it. Because that first round pick in 2015, once again, 28th overall because consistency was flipped. The 28th overall pick in 2015 was flipped once again to the New York Islanders, hilariously, for a second rounder in 2015 and a third rounder in 2015. Okay, I, I don't know. We already know Tampa didn't do very well by getting two seconds for the 28th overall pick in 2014. And in 2015, they got a second and a third, which is even less. Ooh, okay. All right, well, let's see how they do. Let, let's focus on the second first, or the second, second, the first. Let's focus on the second round pick b before the other one. You know what I'm trying to, all right, if you can do better, you do these trade trees, all right? Anyway, let's let's focus on the, uh, what, what's, the what's the pick? 2015 second. The Lightning used that pick to select a player named Mitchell Stevens. He played 45 games with the Tampa Bay Lightning and had seven points. Since we're playing this game, the next pick after Mitchell Stevens was defenseman Travis Dermott, and the pick after both of them was Sebastian Ajo. The Carolina one, not the not the Islanders one. You imagine the Lightning as they are, but also with Thatcher Demko and he, as their backup, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's gross. And Kristen Dvorak and Sebastian Ajo. That's, Stop that. We'll leave the third rounder for later. Let's look at Mitchell Stevens because he was traded to the Detroit Red Wings for a sixth rounder in 2022. Did Tampa use that pick? No, they did not because it's time for another trade featuring a sixth and a fourth. That sixth rounder in 2022 was packaged with a fourth rounder in 2022 and sent to the LA Kings for a third rounder in 2022. With that third rounder, the Lightning selected a player by the name of Lucas Edmonds, who played in the OHL last year. It says here he had, in 68 games played, 113 points? And, and he wasn't the third? I know he was an overager, but holy cow! Jeez, who was the second highest scoring guy on his team? Shane Wright? Who is this guy? Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad something finally broke Tampa's way, you know? Ah, well, we'll see how he pans out. Let's end this trade tree with a bang. Because remember, the first round pick that Tampa got from New York in 2015 was traded for a second and a third. That second might pay dividends still with Lucas Edmonds. Holy smokes. What about the third rounder in 2015? Well, the Lightning kept that pick, and it's a good thing they did because they used it to select a player, you may have heard of him, named Anthony Sorelli. 159 points in 294 career games with Tampa so far, and that doesn't begin to describe the type of player Anthony Sorelli is. Captain of the Memorial Cup winning 2015 Oshawa Generals, I am contractually obligated to mention that every single time I bring up Anthony Sorelli. This guy just turned 25 years old. As a rookie, he was sixth in rookie voting and 11th in Selkie voting. He just turned 25. He's finished top five in Selkie voting twice. 
he's probably going to win one, at very least get nominated for several. I'm just reminded now that Bergeron didn't retire. Well, maybe the year after. And of course, he has 34 points in 94 career Stanley Cup playoff games. Again, he just turned 25. He's been to three straight Stanley Cup final, and he won two of them. I'd say Tampa did pretty well. This trade tree is fascinating to me because it's got short-term and long-term payoffs. The drama surrounding Martin St. Louis and his tumultuous departure from the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Rangers immediately make it to the Stanley Cup final with St. Louis. And then the next year, the Lightning make it and defeat St. Louis en route to the Stanley Cup final. That's all great short-term stuff. And it shows that it's a good trade for both teams. The Rangers benefited, the Lightning benefited, both teams did well. That's the sign of a good trade. But what both the Rangers and the Lightning were able to do afterward, after the first two years, was keep the trade tree going to the point where it's paying off for both teams today, eight years later. Because I think Sorelli is gonna be around for a while. Still, he just signed a bajillion year contract extension. You might've forgotten that, that was, that was early in the off season. I'm fascinated to see what this Lucas Edmonds kid can do. And heck, the Rangers have a draft pick they haven't even used yet because it's not 2023 yet. A fascinating deal, a huge deal, and one that is still going. So, what did you think of the Martin St. Louis trade tree? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Maybe if uh, a guy on your team becomes the oldest player to ever win the Art Ross Trophy. Martin St. Louis, he won it when he was 37. Maybe if he does that, um, don't leave him off the Olympic team. Or do. T Tampa's pretty good. It, it worked out well for them. <laughs>